Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's been a little bit due to all the stuff involved with the college application process, but I'm pretty much wrapped up with that for now, so I'm ready to share some more cool stuff. I'm gonna be doing a bit of a simpler tutorial today. I'm gonna create a lightning module featuring two types of lightning, lines and arcs. The arcs follow a Bezier curve while the lines follow a straight path. This should be helpful for you guys trying to get into front end scripting, and it's also fully customizable. If you ever need help with these tutorials, join my Discord server through the link in the description and feel free to explore the scripting help channels. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, once we get our place open, we're gonna need the Bezier module and the Boat Tween module. I'll put the links to them in the description so you guys can go get them there. And we're gonna create a module inside relocated storage just called Lightning. Let's define it. Oops. Wait. Yo, okay. And then we can do return lightning. We're gonna define a few services, just these ones here. And the path for these is determined on where you put the modules. The rest should be the same. And then we're also going to create a type just called lightning data. The way the lightning module works is we're going to essentially take two points and create a bunch of points in between them. And then we're going to vary the position of those points so that it looks like lightning. We're going to use the color, the time that it takes for the lightning to generate, the width, which is how thick the lightning is, uh, the envelope, which is how much that thickness can vary, and then the shift, which is how much the points can vary, uh, the points in here, and speed, which is a number that is self-calculated and it's just how fast lightning should be. And then we're going to create an RNG here, a randomizer, so we don't have to call math all random every time. This is the cast function. It's going to take in these points and then it'll create the animation of the lightning playing. The idea is that we're going to need the previous attachment and also the previous beam. So we're going to reference those points before and we're going to connect them using beams. Now, oh, of course, we're going to need to loop through the points that were supplied in lightning data in order to do that. And for every point within there, we need to create an attachment. So that's how we do that. Now, if we have a previous attachment, that means we have to do something. That means we have to connect it with a beam. But regardless if we do or not, we do need to set our previous attachment after everything to be equal to the new attachment that we created. So now we're going to get a couple of variables required. We're going to need the distance and the move time. Distance is the distance between these two points and move time is how fast that or how long it would take for the animation to play. And the reason why I have it divided by two is because we don't actually want the lightning to take exactly this the uh, lifetime uh, to appear. We want it to be slightly faster so that it has time to fade out. And then we're gonna set the position of the first attachment to the previous attachment's position. That's the basis. We're gonna need to create a beam now and the beam properties you can change uh, your own way. Um, we currently don't have previous beam, but that's okay. And all we're gonna do now is we're gonna play a animation. Essentially moves our attachment to its cor correct position. We set it to its previous attachment's position and then we move it linearly to the new attachment's position so that it looks like it's growing. Now we're gonna use Boatween here because Boatween lets us tween the width of a beam a little bit easier. Something like this should suffice. Take the move time. You can change the easing style. I use out here as well. You can mess with these. And we set their, our width e equal to either the previous beam's width or the uh, original width if there's no previous beam. And this right here just randomizes the kind of thickness of the beam. Let me play the animation here. And then we, now that we have a beam, we can set previous beam equal to our current beam. Now we're going to do a task.delay. And we're going to delay this by the time that it takes for this entire thing over two. And 
this is where we're going to trigger the fading out of our beam. We're going to destroy the previous boat tween. I don't think this number will ever um, be too early. It won't ever destroy it too early, I think. Because this is the whole lightning's time, so it should be fine. If it's not exactly uh, in sync. And we're actually going to create another uh, bow tween. So I'm just going to copy that straight over. And instead of that, we're just going to set it to zero. So we're going to fade it out here. And because of that, I'm going to set this to in too. I think in looks pretty cool here. Now, once we have that, we're actually going to wait this amount of time. And we're also going to change, instead of this being move time, we're going to change it to this. So after both of these waits, our beam should be gone now. So we're going to destroy our boat tween. We're going to fade out the attachment. And then we're going to destroy our beam and our attachment. It's just like that. Side here, we're going to cast out weight by the move time, and then previous is here. And after all that, cast out weight because we don't actually see the last point because we're always looking at the previous one. We're gonna do lightning data the time, we're going to destroy the last point, which is now the previous point. Be of this. Okay, so this, if it's supplied a array of points and a speed, we'll be able to create any lightning pattern. So you guys can mess with that. I'm gonna create two types of lightning. As I said in the video, we're gonna do a line and we're going to do an arc. They're both very similar in their approaches, just the arc uses a Bezier curve instead. So we're gonna give a few parameters here. We're gonna need our point one, point two, lightning data, which is gonna be a lightning data. Uh, we're gonna need our segments, and then we're gonna need our cast. Cast is the number of lightning strands or beams that we're going to create. If we don't have the segments, then we can create an arbitrary value for it just in case we don't always want to preset it. It's better to preset it if we want to ensure performance because if there's like a super long beam, it's gonna have a lot of segments and that can get kind of laggy. Now, all we need to do is repeat this for the number of casts that we have. Spawn so we don't yield the thread. And of course, I should probably use task.spawn instead of the normal spawn. Whoopsies. And then we're going to create our array of points. Oops. Like that. We're going to create a few variables. The total distance and the base, which is for the randomizer effect. And we're going to do next number. And we're going to multiply it just by 300. So, for i is equal to 0. And we're going to do segments. So this is going to be generating every single point. So we're going to create a noise x, and we're going to do base plus i. Create a noise y, which is going to be math noise, and we're going to do zero base plus i noise z is math dot noise. 0 base plus i. The reason we're going to do this is because if we did pure random, the beam might look a little bit too jagged. If we want to be slightly smooth but still random, we use noise because this, this number right here, this plus i, will guarantee that our values are somewhat close together. It's like traversing a, um, a gradient texture of randomized um, depth. And then we use this in order to gauge 
uh, how much to vary the points by so that they're kind of close together but still randomly vary. Because we start our loop at zero, we actually need to do plus one here. And we're gonna do P1 plus I times P2 minus P1. So getting the difference here divided by segments. So this is the math to place um, attachments in a straight line. And then we're going to vary that all by plus vector three dot new. We're gonna do noise x times lightning data shift over two. To be honest, we can copy this. Get rid of that, and all we need to do is change noise z and noise y. Not bad. And if our i is not equal zero, then we're going to need to add to the distance here. Now one thing to note is that if we want the last point to always be 0.2, then we need to set it again here. Just do, should be that, and then build P2. Now we're gonna set our lightning data at points equals points lightning data dot speed is going to be equal to distance divided by lightning data dot time and then we're going to simply call lightning data dot cast or no dot cast and then lightning data so this is our function for line and if we were to try some tester code, which I'm just going to go here inside this local script, I have some stuff here. This should work. Um, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So for this, all I'm doing is taking an origin endpoint lightning data and do six segments. And then I'm going to do four casts. So if I play the game, hopefully the game doesn't bug out. And as you can see, it works. I'm shooting lightning beams out. It's pretty performant overall and you can do some pretty crazy stuff too. Like if we were to go in here and get rid of the 1 over 30, the cooldown on it, it'll be so fast and not very laggy at all. It's pretty nice nice and efficient of course if we did this without setting the number of segments it could get a little bit laggy but that's why I, this is a feature and we're going to do the arc which requires a midpoint you can honestly customize the way it works i'm going to use like a three point bezier here but in reality you could do like a bunch of different like points for the curve to act on so let's see, we're obviously going to need 0.1, we're going to need a midpoint, and we're going to need a 0.3 so that it can be an actual curve. And then we're going to need a lightning data, which is a lightning data, and then segments, and then cast. So if we were to just grab this entire thing here, we'd always, we'd honestly be like halfway done. The difference is that we're not going to follow a exact point instead we're just going to use a bezier so put this code here we're going to do bezier.new 0.1.23 and the difference is we're going to actually take this code here which gives us a straight line and replace it with this i over segments this gives us basically the entire bezier and position based on the percentage of completion And unlike here, we're going to need this to be three. And if we go back into our tester code, I'll put the tester code in my, uh, in my Discord. So if you want it, you can get it there. Um, but pretty simple. If the R key is pressed, then these are the points. We use the origin, the midpoint slightly higher by 10, and the endpoint lightning data. I have this set as nil, so it'll automatically generate 
the number of segments, and then forecast. So let's see how this looks. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. A nice arc, and the beam doesn't look too jagged. Not even when I'm shooting like <laughs> so many all at once. It looks pretty cool. I'm curious to see what you guys would use this for. Personally, I think it'd be nice for literally just like lightning effects. Like if you need like a single beam to go from like point A, point B, like a gate or something. Or you can honestly get kind of creative with this and use it for something other than lightning as well. If you just change the property of the beam. I don't know what it could be used for, like some tendrils maybe. But yeah, if you guys make anything cool with this, just let me know. Uh, DM me or just showcase it in my Discord server too. I'm pretty excited to see what you guys come up with. And so yeah, thanks for watching this video. If you found this helpful at all, make sure you guys subscribe, join the Discord server, and put a like on this video if you want to see more like this. Thank you guys. I'll see you next time.